What a day, what a day. Another great day comes to an end. Hope you guys had a fantastic Thursday. Did we all survive Dr. Doom here this afternoon? I would say we survived pretty darn well. Thursday evening, back to work, back to work. Friday is right around the corner. It's April 21st, 2022. My name is Joseph, and as always, welcome back to your nightly newsletter. Now, if you're watching for the first time tonight, it is great to have you with me. My job tonight is to help us find the best trades setting up for Friday's trading session. And boy, do we have a buffet of trades setting up for tomorrow. Big moves on the charts today. Got some ranges on the crude oil. I love ranges. Love those big moves. Very excited to wrap up the week on a Friday trading session. I'm going to cover all my favorite trades in tonight's video. That way you have a roadmap to make some money tomorrow. And you know how we roll. I'm going to make sure I give you some traps, some, some stuff to avoid tomorrow. Uh, stay out of trouble tomorrow, whether you're trading on your own or you're trading with us in the trade room. So we're going to cover all the good stuff tonight. And we'll talk about some stuff to stay away from so you can keep all that money you're making on those winning trades. Before we jump in, though, tonight, we've got a lot we're going to cover in tonight's video. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. I publish all my best trade ideas every evening on this video newsletter. I don't want you to miss tomorrow night's video, so make sure you subscribe. Set those notifications because a lot of this stuff is very time-sensitive, right? So hit that little bell icon and make sure you get notified every time we upload something new. How about questions? I do answer all the questions in the comments section. If you got any questions, drop those questions for me in the comment section. I would love to hear from you down in the comments, so don't be shy in the comments. And I really appreciate you guys tuning in tonight. If you enjoy this video as much as I enjoy making it, do me a favor, hit that like button for me. I appreciate you guys supporting this YouTube channel. But enough of the intro, though, right? Friday is right around the corner. From what we saw today, oh, man, oh, man, I wish I wish we had a couple more days left this week. It's been a great week. Uh, we're going we're gonna to finish up here uh, on a, on a, on a a really good note here for tomorrow. Charts are all looking really, really good for tomorrow. Big move down on the S&P. Big move down on the NASDAQ. Anytime, anytime we have big, big moves in one day, we know there are two very specific types of trade setups that we look for the following day. We'll talk about those two and we'll talk about maybe some reversals and some breakouts and things like that. So the NASDAQ and the S&P are very similar, but I'll tell you, you'll notice uh, the S&P is right on uh, last week's close. The NASDAQ went through last week's close. We'll talk about why I think that's a big, big difference tonight. So even though they're very similar, we're going to talk about why, you know, for example, I think there's there are certain setups that fit better in the NASDAQ, certain setups that fit better on the S&P. We'll break those down here in just a moment. And then you got the oil. Oil, oil, oil definitely looks like he, oil looks like it's drunk right now. It's range bound. It's stumbling around. It feels like it's drunk on Powell. I think it's drunk on, on, on inflation talk right now and probably stuff happening, of course in Ukraine. Oil is a big juicy range and you know me we love ranges buying low selling high fading breakouts and we'll also talk about breakouts tomorrow because uh, not all breakouts are the same on oil right now. You know a bull breakout is very different than a bear breakout tonight. So I like the idea of some breakouts but I'm leaning towards one side more than the other. I'm going to talk more about that as we get a little bit deeper uh, into this video talking about Friday trading session. So we get a range on oil, big, big, strong trends on the S&P and the NASDAQ. Ooh, I can't wait to get these charts all, all going here tonight. Before we jump in, though, let's make sure we grab a look at the news for tomorrow because, you know, tomorrow's a Friday. We have, oh, shocker, we have some more inflation numbers coming out tomorrow at 9.45 Eastern time. Now, if you're, if you're a member of our trade room, you know what I'm going to say right now. I love it when I have a news report at 9.45 because we have this, this time of day called the 10 o'clock shock, right? The 10 o'clock shock. The 10 o'clock, top of the hour, we consistently find some of the best trades around 10 a.m., you know, give or take, you know, 9.50, 10.15, 10.20, right? Around that, that, that 10 o'clock hour. So to have a big news event like this tomorrow at 9.45, always kind of gets me a little bit anxious to trade tomorrow. I'm looking forward to some setups around, you know, 9.50 to 10.30 tomorrow morning. And remember, tomorrow's a Friday. Fridays are oftentimes, not every time, but oftentimes can be a much smaller window of opportunity. Remember tomorrow, like we said yesterday, 
Trading is like riding a bicycle. It's easier when it's moving. So generally speaking, on most Fridays, you want to make your money early in the session and take the afternoons off. But every once in a while, we get a really nice, busy, fast-moving, consistent afternoon session. So again, trading is like riding a bicycle. If it's slow tomorrow after, you know, 11 o'clock, 11.30, might as well, might as well uh, uh, close up shop and enjoy uh, uh, a, a Friday afternoon. If we're getting good personality tomorrow, though, we can definitely keep pushing it into Friday afternoon. So we'll have to kind of see what we get tomorrow as far as personality goes. But the general kind of assumption of a Friday is early in, early out. If we see good personality going into the afternoon, by all means, or if there's any kind of unexpected headlines that come up that might keep these markets moving pretty well into the afternoon session. Now, what might what might be some unexpected headlines? Well, of course, we're all waiting to hear more from Ukraine. You know, we, we've we, we've been hearing more back and forth. It's, again, we're kind of in a waiting period right now, so we're kind of waiting for that next shoe to drop. That might be a reason why oil looks a little bit drunk right now. And then, of course, obviously, Fed speakers. Uh, there's no scheduled Fed speakers. You know, we heard from Powell today. We had a, a plethora on, you know, we've we've had a lot of Fed speakers all week this week. We don't have any scheduled Fed speakers, but you know they're going to get in front of a camera at some point tomorrow and they're going to say something that will move these markets. And so that is definitely something that we'll be listening in for on our, you know, we have like a real-time news feed that we use in our trade room to kind of keep up with all of that stuff that's unscheduled. So, you know, will we hear some more Fed speak about inflation uh, or rates? And will we hear any updates out of Ukraine uh, for tomorrow? Those are definitely things that we expect uh, to shake markets up, and we'll be listening closely for that as well. But I'll tell you right now, if you could only be at your desk for an hour tomorrow, I would think 9.30 to 10.30, you know, 9.45 to 10.45, mwah, that, should be, that should be the good stuff uh, tomorrow morning in the trade room and really any market uh, that you're trading here tomorrow. And hopefully, you know, hopefully it keeps on pushing. Hopefully we get some a full, full session uh, tomorrow. So we'll definitely see what we get. You know, we're traders, so we take whatever whatever the market gives us here. Back to our charts, though. S and P, Nasdaq, crude oil. Okay, here's 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 the deal. Whether you trade one of these markets or you trade all of these markets, like we do in our trade room, I'm going to go through each one of these charts, talk about, talk my favorite trades for tomorrow, and some stuff to keep an eye out. Right, stay out of trouble. You're going to learn something new throughout the entire video. I'll provide different trade variations, different lessons to learn, different money-making opportunities, loss-avoiding opportunities as we go throughout the entire video. And remember, remember, I try to save the best stuff for last, so I'll definitely give you a reason to stick around and watch all the way to the end tonight of, of, this, of this video, all right? So get comfortable, grab some notes, grab some notes, uh, take some screenshots, and we'll go over all the good stuff here uh, as we go. Let's jump into the S&P 500 first. What's the What's the most important thing on the S and P here today? What if, what if, what if, what if somebody asked me what what happened in the E meeting today? What would I say here today? I would say I would say we have a really big move down. And usually, whenever we see this big of a move in one direction, we are either going to see a sideways range, which might be starting to show up as we speak right now. And of course, the big thing is whenever we get a really big big move, you have to think it's going to take a bit of a deep pullback to attract sellers into this market. So it's really important right now that we start to think about where we can find levels of resistance to be able to sell into those deep pullbacks. As you can imagine, little shallow pullbacks down here are not going to be enough to really entice those professionals, those big lot traders into the market right now. So big move. That's the that's the most important factor. You'll notice we've got right the move up is then literally doubled down. This could be, be kind of a what we call a, a double down in our trade room. The amount we go up, right, is then one and then two down, a 200% kind of rollover. You could say a 300% off uh, off of that high. Just a monster move. And of course, you can see surprise surprise. Is there any is there any surprise? We we talked about this last night, of course. On at the end of the week, we oftentimes end up right back at the last week's close here. This I do believe 
is a very big clue between the S&P and the NASDAQ. And we'll talk about more about that once we go over to our NASDAQ uh, here for tomorrow. So big move down, expect a range, expect a deep pullback to attract bears into this market. Okay, so how do we want to buy it? How do we want to sell it? Bears, yeah. Sellers would love to sell up inside some of these battle zone areas. This, of course, is a beautiful area. And this could really be, you know, it really could be extended like all the way up there, really. This whole area is a beautiful spot for some shorts. So bears would love to sell any bounces right now. I would imagine too, if we go sideways here, sellers of course will still be looking to sell up above the high of a trading range. And also too, we have another kind of uh, major support level down here at 43.55. I wouldn't be surprised at all because in all reality, this you know last week's close is not really a support area, it's a range as you can see, it's that range we had. Uh, what was that back? Was that was that Monday this week? Yeah, yeah Monday this week. Uh, right. Oh, sorry. After the holiday, I forget. Right. The next beta support level is down here. So it wouldn't. You know, in a long story short, it wouldn't surprise me if this thing kind of dribbles lower overnight, and we continue here to be looking for ways to sell. The thing right now is, is we have to, we have to put some meat on the bone for the bears out there. You know, we have to get some sort of deep pullback to attract those sellers. How about the buyers right now? I'll tell you, buyers have options, but they've got to be really careful right now because again, any, or any bounce off this low is likely to be seen as a selling opportunity. So if I'm a buyer right now, if I'm trying to be a buyer on this, there are really two basic scenarios. One would be a double bar reversal I do like that long trade you know let the sellers let the sellers come in and and do their thing you know let them make their money let them retest that low and then we can buy going you know going off that low right bears get what they want buyers can now get what they want and I also think too if we go into a range down here at some point again this could be here could be here we don't really know exactly where it'll be yet but if we go into a range here I also think too we may be able to get some longs right on a kind of a sling shot back up into that trading range. So, so I definitely think there's possibility for that as well. So lots of ways to trade this. Definitely seems like the easier money right now is the sell side, but things can change so quickly. So we definitely want to make sure that we are ready. You know, this channel here, you can see this channel is almost a waste of a channel. Uh, I want I wanted to put it on there so you can see how I would draw it. But really the most important thing right now is just wait for that bounce and be ready to trap in uh, some of those buyers. What do I mean by that? What do I mean by trap in some of those buyers here? Whenever I see a big big move like this and I know I'm looking for a deep pullback what you want to be thinking tomorrow is is once this thing pulls back to the point where you start going huh I wonder if this is a reversal that's when it's deep enough right when it feels like this thing's going to start to reverse right then right when you catch yourself tomorrow going oh my goodness maybe they're no 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 that's the time when you want to start looking for the short I've seen this so many times before in my career where you're like, all right, give me a pullback, give me a pullback. And they pull back and eventually keep going and going. You're like, oh my goodness, maybe this is going to be a V bottom reversal. And sure enough, you get roped into that long and yeah, boom, right back down to retest the low. So that's what's going through my head tomorrow on that deep pullback. Once it feels like, oh my goodness, maybe this is a reversal. Nope. It's probably the perfect time to want to sell here now. So let's talk. Let's 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 talk about this. The goal of this, which I kind of just illustrated for you right there, the goal is is let's get that nice deep pullback. Let's get some of these buyers to come in, see if they again. And, and I say I say foolishly, but I'm guilty as charged. I made this mistake so many stinking times as a new trade. That's why I kind of know it so well. I know how it feels to be kind of convinced into that reversal. Wait for those buyers to try to buy it, and then once they once they do that. Again, remember, all of these, all the big money traders now are going to be coming up into this area and they're trying to sell into it. So once those buyers are buying in, they're just, they're likely filling all those short sell, or those, those, those sell orders. Think about where their stops are now and just, and just literally we're, we're selling right into those stops with a failure pattern. We call these failures for obvious reasons, buyers fail. And then what I like to do is, is grab the first pullback off that moving average. Okay, we call these we call these failure into into pullback 
combinations, failure into pullback combos. Now, keep in mind too, if again, if this starts to kind of dribble lower, you know, let's say it keeps on dribbling lower here, which is probably pretty darn likely at this point considering where you know what that 55 half level actually represents you know we talked about how how strange it was that we hadn't ended up uh, here earlier this week and so it does seem to be kind of obvious we might go lower here same you know same idea let's say for example let's say for example that we keep on you know, again, kind of, kind of dribbling lower here. If we keep on kind of grinding lower here now, it's the exact same thing. We're waiting for that pop. We're waiting for the sellers to take some profit. We're waiting for this price to go up. And ideally, I'd like to get above some of these prior swings up here. You know, this is where traps are be hanging out. Uh, really, above prior swings are where all the big players are usually waiting, right, for that, for those entries, good liquidity areas for a big position to get built in. Let those buyers try to buy it. And then again, we're using that failure into that pullback combination, okay? That failure into pullback combo. Now, guys, I know a lot of you all have, have been watching this video every night. You've been sending me emails with screenshots of your trades. So I know a lot of you guys have already learned this, this, these setups, the failures, the pullbacks, the traps. You've taken the free trading course. You learn the rules. You know when to take them. You're doing well with it. But if you're here for the first time right now, and again, I know most of you guys have already grabbed the course. You've learned the strategy. You're trading on your own right now. But if you're here for the first time, if you one of the few people who haven't taken that free trading class yet, what I'll do is I'll put a little link for you here in the upper right-hand corner. That way you can learn all of these setups. Uh, if you hate missing the best trades each day, or if you're sick of taking so many losses, if you're making too many mental mistakes because you don't have a roadmap to follow, that free trading course, that little link up there, will be a perfect roadmap to follow for anyone trying to earn income every day in these markets. You'll learn my four favorite entry setups, Right, all the failures, the traps, the pullback combos, and most importantly, you'll learn all the rules so you know when to take them and when to skip them. I've also got hundreds of examples of how we apply those setups to our favorite futures markets. So don't delay. Pause the video if you need to. Grab that link. Grab that free course if you haven't done so already. That way, the next time I say deep pullback, failure into pullback combination, you'll know exactly uh, what I'm talking about. Now, I want to talk about range ranges, but I want to save some some of the good stuff for the NASDAQ, all right? So we'll talk about the ranges because I, I, I you got to be anticipating a range here for sure, but let's talk about the range on the NASDAQ. In the meantime, though, let's talk about what a reversal might look like here on the S&P. The NASDAQ doesn't look as easy to get a reversal than the S&P does. The, and you'll see in a moment here once we get over to the NASDAQ here. So we've talked about the sell side here. How do the buyers get involved right now? How would the buyers trade this? Well, as I had mentioned before, I think we can definitely get that short off the high and then buy off of that low. So let's think about that scenario and then we'll talk about some reversals here. First things first, we know that if this market goes up, they want to retest the low, right? So they come back to retest that low. Let's just say, for example, they get that move up, the buyers try, they fail, and we end up back down Bingo, target, right? Target achieved, mission accomplished. Now, at that point, sellers got what they want. No more big sellers down here anymore. Now we can safely look for that long side position. Here's the way you want to do it, though. You want to try to trap in some of those bears because remember, we don't have any momentum on our side here. Momentum is a gift to us traders. You know, it makes everything easier. If I'm trying to pick a bottom on this, I don't have momentum kind of dragging my trade in the right direction. So I have to find some other catalyst. I need some help. And that catalyst are stop losses. We have to use those stops as fuel. Again, because we're going against the overall momentum. So we have to use the stops. Now, one try, two try for the bears is what I look for to know that I have enough sellers committed down there. These are assumed to be inexperienced traders. You know, professionals aren't selling down here. They've already got their short and they're already cashing their paycheck at that low. But once those inexperienced, and again, we assume they're inexperienced traders. Once we see the bears try a couple times down here, now we know where their stops are. And now we do the same thing now. Now this is a two try failure because again, we're going against the momentum. Once I see that nice juicy signal candle, 
I like to go out and draw trend lines off those lows as well to kind of give me an early entry, give me some more confidence on that reversal. That gives us now that failure. Now, that failure, we're not, we're not done yet. Where do the buyers want to go at this point? The buyers want to go in and take out that high. Okay, that's their big objective, all right? Well, that's their next objective. So at this point now, we can now look for another entry. And to do that, I'm gonna find a new channel by drawing off that high. I'm gonna find, or a new trend line. I'm gonna find the channel by copying and pasting it down to that low. And then I'm gonna drill down to my faster time frame and I'm gonna find an entry setup off of that low, okay? Now that entry setup, it's my, my favorite is a trap. I like traps, I like failures, I like pullbacks, strength moves. Again, you're gonna learn those setups inside inside of that free course, right, that popped up there in the upper right-hand corner, okay? You're gonna to wanna to take that class, that way you know what the difference is between a one-try failure, a two-try failure, how to spot that new channel and go from there. What you wanna kinda of keep in mind, though, on this reversal, again, is that the buyers, or sorry, the sellers will be coming back in up around these highs again, most likely. Okay, so be aware you want that follow up trade ideally before you get there. All right, before you get there. That's a very important part in a very bear market like this because a lot of times it's a big reversal. You know, it's a big range. You know what I mean? And we'll talk about ranges here in a second. So, how do we buy it as it pulls back? Doesn't seem likely right now. You know, doesn't seem likely. But let's say, for example, we do pull back. And let's say, for example, now the buyers, you know, who knows? You know, maybe something happens overnight. I don't know, right? This, anything can happen these days. Uh, big move down, maybe it will be a reversal. Now, again, we're not going to trust this first pullback, okay? I, I never trust that first pullback, not with, especially not with a bear market like this. But if the buyers can come in, if they can actually hold that pullback off the moving average, and as we always say, jump off the moving average here, Okay, that is the key. Remember, when it comes to a reversal, it does not matter how how strong that first leg is. Okay, and we'll talk. We're, we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about on the Nasdaq here in a couple seconds. Here, we're going to talk about uh, the size of that pullback. You'll see why I'm saving that for the Nasdaq in a moment. Okay, just be aware though. Okay, no, no matter how big that first pullback is, that first leg is. It doesn't matter, okay? Not when there's this much momentum. Once those buyers hold it and jump off the moving average, now it's a reversal. This jump is made possible not by buyers really, but by sellers walking away. The sellers literally give control in that, in that situation to the buyers here. Once it happens, now mark up that high, mark up that low, and the entry that I love the most is a trap right below that prior swing. Now, obviously, there'll be more prior swings that I'm drawing here and inside that free class. I mentioned the free course earlier, right? You'll, you'll see more examples of that, right? So I'm obviously simplifying this right now. So that's going to be my first test off the low of that channel. Now, where would my target be on this move going higher? Remember, first leg and third leg are oftentimes very, very similar, okay? They're almost always symmetrical. And you'll see that in a second in the NASDAQ as well. So we know kind of how big that first leg will be, and that's gonna give me an idea of how big that third leg will be, and that's kind of where my medium-term target is gonna be, okay? That's gonna be one type of reversal. Let me give you one more, right? Let me give you one more, and then we'll talk a few more on the oil as we go later on in this video, okay? Here's another one. Easy come, easy go. Big move down. Let's say now we pop up again. We get into that battle zone, but now instead of the buyers coming in and holding it or the buyers coming in and failing and back down again, now the market starts to grind. It starts to kind of flutter and starts to float higher, almost as if there's a string attached to it. Now, this would be what we call a short squeeze or a short covering rally. I say easy come, easy go, because when you see a market kind of fall out of bed like this, there, there is potential that if the sentiment changes dramatically overnight, all those bears that got short on the way down, they may go, oh, oh boy, get me out of this one, and the market will just gravitate back higher. That is more, it's a little bit confusing because it doesn't exactly fit the whole jump off the moving average. Bottom line is draw that, draw, draw that, tr that trend line off the highs, bring it down off that low, same idea. Find those traps get underneath those prior swings. And in that video class I mentioned, I'll show you guys how to find traps, failures, pullbacks, and strength moves as we go. Again, first leg, 
third leg. Think about that now for your objective. Again, doesn't seem like it's likely right now, but who, who knows, man? In the world we live in today, who knows? Anything is possible, right? So now we get a good plan there on the on the S&P. If it keeps on dribbling lower, just keep waiting for that pop-up and look to sell it as we go. How about some NASDAQ here right now? Now, NASDAQ is, is very similar. Uh, to the s p 500 there are some there are some you know relatively uh, uh, big differences I think on the Nasdaq uh, you'll notice in the Nasdaq we pretty much make a one two three legged move down right first leg off the high third leg off the high right that of course is used for your for your target pretty easy there you can see that market makes three legs down whenever I see a market that goes three legs down usually we're heading to a range three legs into a range is pretty darn common in, in any liquid market, especially the futures markets. So we're basically three legs down into a trading range. We're definitely going to talk about that trading range here. Now, we already talked about on the S&P, we talked about kind of selling into that, into that bounce, right? Well, as you can see in this one, though, we have a little bit more, well, remember, uh, the NASDAQ is well below last week's close. Right? The S&P is basically sitting right on last week's close. So on top of that, you can easily see the NASDAQ has a lot more leg room. You know, the, the NASDAQ could easily make, you know, that's almost, yeah, that's almost a 50% pullback right there. So NASDAQ, I think, has potential for a shallower pullback along with a much deeper pullback. Okay, so we definitely want to talk about how those are different and, you know, how we'll trade them uh, because that is definitely a very, a very big difference there uh, on, the, on the NQ, right? Still the same basic idea, you know, still have a very big move. So we definitely anticipate a deep pullback. We anticipate a, a range down here. We also know, too, the NASDAQ has some more support below us. So if we do end up dribbling down, same idea. Wait for the pop-up and the failure back down again. So that's the, all those are very similar to the S&P. Let's, let's talk about, though, a couple of things here. Uh, first of all, the two different types of pullbacks. Okay, This, is, I think, is a very, a very important part of this. So nothing different on the first zone, right? That 13,850. We pop up. I've got a pretty nice looking channel here. That's actually the low of day today. You can't really see it very well, but that's, that's the low of day today. I do like the way this channel looks. I would like this channel to be act to be to be anchored up that low, but it does fit pretty well like that. So I really like, and as I mentioned before, you will see a lot of big money sellers be hanging out right above, not the high of a channel so much, but right above a prior swing. And so that is definitely where I'm looking for my first entry on this one, which would be a deep, you know, relatively deep pullback. Again, I'm not a really big fan of picking tops and bottoms. I'm going to make sure those buyers come in, try to get long. And once they try to get long, we can use that failure into that pullback combination on that move back down to retest the low. Okay. That's, we, again, we talked about that before on the S&P. What if we really pull back? If we really pull back, there are kind of two different types of scenarios that you want to think about. Here's the first one, and this is the most common one. First is, of course, a very deep pullback here. Now, at this point now, we're up inside this area. This is also why I think it's going to be a little more difficult for the NASDAQ to get a reversal tomorrow. I think the S&P is a lot more just open space to work with. You know what I mean? If the S&P pulls back halfway, uh, it'll be above that prior resistance. The NASDAQ won't be. So this is why I feel like the NASDAQ has a little bit less likelihood. Again, anything's possible, right? But if I had to guess, I would say the S&P is more capable of a reversal than NASDAQ because of this way it lay, it's laid out right now. Bottom line is, if we see a really deep pullback, I have myself in a great location but we talked about last night, we talked about how one of, the, one of the most important questions I always ask before I take a trade is, how's my location and how is my momentum, right? So location is primo. That's a great location to short. But what's the problem though? Momentum. Yeah, momentum is, well, momentum is very strong on that pullback. So when I have a good location, but I'm worried about momentum, and we'll talk about more of that on oil here in a moment, when I have a good location, but bad momentum, this is exactly where a one, two try failure is going to be the best solution for this. Because again, when it really pulls back, 
you're going to have a buyers, they're going to put more of a fight now, you know, more than they would on just a relatively shallow pullback. Again, the buyers will come in and they will try a little bit harder. Think about now where their stops are, or as I always say in the trade room, think about where their pain is. Think about if you were a buyer, where would you start to score? Or where would you start to look to get out of your position? That's exactly where you want to be selling short. So we wait for that nice strong signal. Let me grab that short. Now, pay attention because the fun is just getting started on this. This is why in all reality, we actually hope we get this deep, deep pullback tomorrow because now we've got plenty more opportunities here to make some money. As we go lower now, now find a new channel and now first test is the best test as we always say, grab that trap or failure pattern, whatever we get off the high. That's that two try failure, and then as the market rolls over and heads back to that low, I'm now looking for that first test off the high of that new channel, okay? That's a money trade right there. That's a really, really good trade, okay? That's, the, that's one key difference there uh, on, the, on the NASDAQ is we do, we do a bigger potential here uh, for that, uh, again, for the, uh, the deeper, deeper pullback here. It would make perfect sense too. You know, maybe back to that last week's close, tap that 950 area, and then dump it back down to retest those lows. Again, if it keeps on dribbling lower, same basic idea. If we go up, failure, pull back, right, and back down. If we really pop up, right, one, two, failure, grab that new channel and hit it from there. So just gonna move that plan down a little bit you know, from there, right? So if it, if it keeps on kind of grinding down like this, now just simply move this, right? Move these here, move that area, you know what I'm saying? Just move it down, keep looking for those traps, keep looking for those deep pullbacks, and just stay patient for it, because it'll eventually happen. Eventually they'll run out of bolts down here and this thing will pull back, and that's what we'll be waiting for. Okay, how about a range here? How about a range? So when it comes to a trading range, what you, not a, not a lot of this is different uh, when it comes to a range. I'm gonna get rid of the channel here for a second. Now, keep in mind, I do not know exactly where this range will be. It looks like it's set or settled in right now, but again, we may dribble lower here, it may be down here. So just kind of bear with me on this. But if we do see a trading range here, what you want to remember is, is that the key when we have a bear market in a trading range is you want to look left and find previous, really ideally find trend lines, find levels of resistance, right? So find previous highs, previous lows, find levels of resistance up overhead. There could be a channel coming down, you know what I'm saying? You, know what I'm saying? you want to find some area of resistance because when we see a range, ranges act like magnets, okay? so. Again, if I can get a range coming on down here, find levels of resistance, and then just simply wait for the breakout, right? Wait for the pullback. Once that breakout happens, don't try to pick the top on this. What's gonna happen is, is you'll try to, right, you'll, you'll, you'll short that level, buyers will come in, they'll come in and they'll pop it out and they'll stop you out and then drop it right back down in again. It's difficult to predict where that top is, you know, unless you're willing to keep on selling into it as it goes, which is not a horrible strategy, but it requires some deep, some deep pockets and a, a, quite a bit of risk tolerance. So be aware of that. So instead of trying to pick that top, so much easier, just wait for the price to pull back. Let those buyers now try to buy that breakout. I made this mistake all the time when I was a new trader, thinking that trading range for some reason meant we were done going lower or something like that. You know what I mean? It's amazing how many foolish ideas I had as a new trader. What it really is, is that, is that uh, uh, our instincts are, li are lying to us. We can't trust anything common sense is usually the opposite of what you should be doing in the markets. So when you see kind of pull back like that, you're going, oh boy, maybe we're done now. I should buy this. We've gone too far. This is major support. No, 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 no. It's a very strong bear move down. This range is a magnet. Those buyers who get in are just sitting ducks to be short, right? To be, to be literally sold into for that failure. Okay. Now, what you also want to keep in mind on this, before I get off track here, is the amount we go above the range is oftentimes the amount we go below the range. So this is where the market wants to go. So the point I'm making on this is, is if we do get that failure off the high, we can now hurry up, find a new channel by drawing off that low, find that channel high, and then grab, as we always say, that first test off the high. Make sense? So again, it's a failure pattern trapping in those breakout pullback buyers. And then as the market rolls over back into the range, we know where it wants to go. 
It wants to go back to retest the range low, but it actually wants to go complete that full rotation. It's kind of the same thing, that slingshot breakout. Remember last night's newsletter? We talked about the slingshot breakout for the S&P and the crude oil, right? It's the exact same idea. It's just in the opposite direction. So we know where it wants to go here, and we can be confident now hitting that buyer failure and, again, hitting that short off the top of that, uh, of, of that, of that channel, all right? And then from there... Uh, if you if, if you recall from last night's video, we talked about how these once they once they break through those pendulum swings, we can really start getting a nice a nice breakout. And we'll talk about some breakouts on the oil because oil is already range bound. So we'll talk about I have probably three different breakouts we'll talk about here on oil in a few moments. All right, guys. Again, we can definitely still look for that that to try, you know, uh, double bottom reversal. So same idea that we talked about on the, the S&P can also be applied there. I would say they'll be very careful with a one, two, three reversal pattern up here. You know, again, I think it's very likely we get this stuff to go up right when it starts feeling like reversals happening, then all of a sudden right back down again. So NASDAQ, NASDAQ really has to pull back and really, I mean, really push through that 13,950 area for us to really want to buy it as it goes higher. Uh, again, I, I love the idea of selling it high down to that low and then buying that profit taking bounce off the low. I like that. But as far as buying it as it goes higher, oh boy, that, 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 that brings back bad loss. <laughs> that brings back bad memories from when I was a rookie in this business. So be careful with that. The range is very, is, is very plausible in the NASDAQ. And I think that covers, I think that covers most of the game plan here for us between the S&P and the NASDAQ. So keep that, keep that, uh, that game plan on your radar and let's keep going here. We'll wrap things up here tonight on the, on the crude oil. And by the way, if you're still watching right now, how about a, how about a like? How about a, how about a thumbs up on the video? I hope you subscribe. And I'll tell you right now, if you're still watching this video right now, your dedication, you are part of that one or two percent of the people that watch these videos all the way to the end. I'm telling you, if you have the dedication to watch this video 36, 37 minutes into the video right now, you got to find a way to get into our trade room because the the, the amount of effort you're willing to put in, you're you're going to do great with us. Because the hardest part of my job is always getting my students to put the effort in right and and, and and you know and, and do it with me every day if you're willing to be disciplined and, and put the effort in right now man you you just it's not it's not your fault you haven't been successful yet you just haven't quite learned the right strategy yet so really do whatever it takes get in that trading with me uh if if you're if you're willing to commit like you're doing right now uh you are the person i i do these videos for and i really hope i get a chance to work with you more every day uh, in the trade room because you get a very bright future in front of you anyways off my soapbox let's get back to our chart on the crude oil What's the most important? What's the most important thing? Well, apparently somebody told oil today was today was a Friday because it looks like it's it looks like it was it's drunk. It looks like it's punch drunk right now. It might be a bit Powell drunk. It might be a bit uh, Ukraine drunk right now. But it it's range bound. You know that's the most important factor. The reason why I say it looks a bit drunk right now is because. You know, we talked about last night on the NASDAQ about how what didn't happen uh, is sometimes the most important clue. You know, that's what kind of gave us that that uh, clue we're going to be going higher today, at least until Powell came in and nuked everything this afternoon. But uh, all kidding aside, though, we, we definitely have that happening right now. Um, it's a trading range. And what we know about trading ranges is that ranges love to rotate, right? So they go down, they go up, they go down, they go up. Well, when we have when we have a market like this that makes that strong run up that was that kind of slingshot reversal we talked about last night when it makes that strong run up and then starts to roll over wh why why didn't they i mean look at this they didn't even take out that low like what gives what what is that all about that doesn't make any sense so obviously there's some you know either either I'm missing something because none of these trend lines line up very well. They just it doesn't make a lot of sense. That's that's why I say this range. It's definitely a range. It just doesn't make a lot of sense the way that it rotated today. You know, it almost looks like, and I almost did it this way. It almost looks like there's a range right there, but obviously there isn't. That's not that's not the actual range. But you know what I mean? It's it just it just looks a little bit again. It looks a little bit confused. So. That's okay though. It's a range. The most important thing about a range is we buy low, we sell high, right? We go up, we sell high, we go low, right? We buy low. We stay away from the middle. 
Okay, buy low, sell high, right? Buy low, sell high, avoid the middle. Now, what do buyers want to get? Yeah, buyers want to buy low, right? Buyers want to buy a breakout. Okay, what do the bears want to do? The sellers want to sell high and the sellers want to sell a breakout. Now, let's talk about breakouts, okay? Which side looks easier right now as far as the breakout goes? What do you think? It's definitely the sell side. The bullish side seems a whole lot more difficult for a breakout right now. Why do I say that? Why do I say that? Well, first of all, we had a very strong move higher. And anytime we see a strong move higher, because again, remember, they didn't go back and take out that low. It's almost like it's, it's, it's like unfinished business. So if we, make, if we make our way all the way back to those highs here, that is like that double bottom reversal we talked about on the S&P and the NASDAQ. You know what I'm saying? This is a great place for sellers to, take, you know, to, 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 jump, to jump back in. At the same time, as we go higher, from, from what I can tell, oil is the only market out of our big three tonight that hasn't retested last week's close. And so it wouldn't make perfect sense to make that final little, you know, like gasp of air, get that last piece closed and back down in a trading range. On top of that, you've got the trend line up here. Okay, that trend line could be a juicy area for a move back down. And then and then let's 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 look left. You know, look left. Let's not forget this is not an overall bull market right now. Right. And again, I know there's a lot of stuff going on in Ukraine right now, and that's kind of the wild card. I get that. But it's a very bear market into a trading range. We have that pendulum swing off the low. The bears came in and held that 105 really well. We go from 105 up to 110. Ugh, that's, a, that's a tough pill to swallow. 105 to 100 tomorrow seems a whole lot easier. It just seems like it is. Now, obviously, that's, this could change overnight. You know, we may hear, you know, uh, uh, more violence in Ukraine, more turmoil in the supply chain for oil. Who knows? But it seems like right now the bears have a lot more options to sell off that high. And then think about the, the, the bear side right now. If we go lower right now, right, if we go lower, would you say the last couple hours are more bullish or bearish on the oil, right? Look at this area right here. If we go lower right now, do you want to buy into that area right there? Please say no. Please, please, please say no. You know what I mean? It just doesn't feel like that's going to be as easy to buy into it. So I really like the breakout to the downside. I'm very suspicious of the breakout to the upside. I would really like to get that nice little nice little grind break uh, breakout going lower here on the crude oil. Okay? So let's talk about that. Let's talk about that as we go lower, right? If we can get this thing to push lower, there's a couple different breakouts I like here. One, of course, will be a one, two, three breakout, right? Relatively strong move down, hold that pullback, blast off that low, right? Remember, jump off the moving average and really blast right through those lows. Mark up that low, find that channel, look left, find those traps or find those prior swings, try to get above those prior swings if possible to give you those traps, failures, and pullback combos. Where would this market want to go? There is one place and that's $100 a barrel. 100 bucks a barrel is right there. We go from 105, right? Tab 105 to the 100 makes perfect sense for tomorrow. Here's another breakout pattern that you don't want to forget tomorrow. They pop and they grind. They pop and they grind. Kind of like this one right here, right? Pop and grind. Trend line, channel, right? Sell into that first pullback as we go. Pop and grind, right? So we draw that trend line down, find that big channel, look left, and look for that pop and fade back into it, right? Again, trap, failure, pullback combo, strength move off of that. 100 is our is our big objective as we go here. I would also think too that if the market was to simply let's say for example we pull back and blast like this, watch out for that two try breakout. Repeat after me. Strong move down, shallow pullback, lower low in price, traps baby. That's a great setup as well. Now, this might be we might get lucky. Maybe we can combine this off the low of a channel or is the high of a channel right? But think about a strong, real strong leg going lower. That shallow pullback, that lower low, that trap. It's a money trade right there. A couple breakouts there. Okay, how do we buy down here? How do we buy it? We take out that low. We now get what? The bears come in. The bears try once. The bears try twice. Why twice? Because we're going against momentum, 
right? Or going to get, and honestly, I don't really hate this setup because if you draw a trend line over this high, right, over these highs here, you'll notice you're going to have some trend line support. You're going to have, you know, triple bottom support there. There are obviously buyers doing something down there because they, they managed to, to, to save this, literally save this market from disaster, uh, you know, you know, late afternoon this afternoon. So I, I don't hate this setup, but remember, it's very bearish at that point. And so we have to remember, if you don't have momentum on your side, you need some other, pardon the pun, you need some other fuel, right? That was a good one, wasn't it? Some fuel to get this thing going here back higher. Let those bears try a couple times, and then you've got that, right, that, that buy going back up here as we go, all right? But again, be very much aware, though, this may roll over and start to grind down here. Once you see that happen, you know exactly what you want next. Right, so keep an eye on that buy off the low, but definitely be aware of potential for a breakout. I would I would stay out of the middle here. Like I said, I mean this is almost like one big range right now. It's kind of a messy looking chart here. Um, as we go higher, what's the game plan? The game plan is make some money. That's that, 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 that's the game plan. Um, whether it's whether it's here or here, you know, I, I would imagine uh, a two try failure. This is like that deep pullback that we talked about the Nasdaq. Right, remember the last chart, in the Nasdaq deep pullback. What do we do? I want to sell up here, but again, momentum is pretty strong. So one, two, and then dump it. And then remember, as we go lower, find that new channel, try to grab that that trap, and there's your short back down again. Two try failure, trap failure, pullback off of that high. And again, I have no problem taking this trade even up even up here. Okay. Now, at the same time, at the same time, how do we buy this thing as we go? We're going to have to get, we're going to have to get up in this area. We're going to have to hold that pullback and this thing has to really jump. At the same time, there will probably be some sort of headlines with this. You know what I mean? There'll be something that's changed overnight. There'll be some, you know, there'll be something that goes on. It'll be Ukraine. It'll be it's something that the world will seem different if this thing really starts to rip higher here. Now, remember, we see a lot of real strong breakouts in the resistance. They have to hold this here. Right, they got to hold it up there. Okay, so if they can hold it, great. If they can't, you know what we're doing back down into that trading range. If they can hold it and really jump, now this range is no more. And now we start looking for that 107 half range. It seems like 110 is probably out of reach tomorrow. There'd be a seven dollar move, you know, give or take, uh, probably out of range for tomorrow. But still, that 107 half level that is the range. That is the big range from that from that big move up. Uh, not this week, right? Yeah, that was yeah, it was earlier this week, right? Uh, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, right? Yeah. So ended last week. So pretty much finishing up and move back up to where we began the week again. It's not impossible, but again, like I mentioned earlier, it doesn't seem as easy for these buyers. So who knows? Maybe something changes overnight. Right, price jumps up. We don't get that one, two failure back down. It says, no, 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 we're, we're going higher here. They jump off that moving average, find that new channel. Don't worry about where you are on this one, okay? If they jump off that moving average, it's almost a guarantee on that first pullback. Now, it may not go all the way to 110, but it will almost always at least go back to retest that high. And so let me do in the trade room, take a quick first target, move that stop to the point of entry, Right, get rid of all the risk and see how far it'll go, you know. And then, oh, and then don't forget too, we might get that that breakout, find that new channel, get that retest of the high. Could you see this coming? Right, retest it and then one, two, back down again. That would make sense too, right? A breakout up into that zone and then we implement that two try failure, find that new channel and dump it back in. We can really wrap all this stuff together pretty, pretty, pretty well. So now you guys know how to trade the the, the pullbacks on the S and P and the Nasdaq. Uh, you know how to trade the ranges, right? Along with the range breakouts. Uh, you know kind of my my idea here uh, on the crude oil. Now just gonna wait and see what we get. You know we're not in the prediction business. We are in the reaction business. We are in the plan your trades and trade your plan business. And that's exactly the goal here for tomorrow. Now, speaking of tomorrow, tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time, every morning, same time, same place in our trade room, I'm going to put all of the membership links, all the free trading class links. I'll put all that good stuff right in the description of this YouTube video. If you are a new trader who wants to get a good foundation built, all the good habits, if you're looking for a place to learn to trade and a place to trade 
trade along with us. Uh, you're going to love our trade room. Our trade room has, I have all the cheat sheets, all the checklists, great place for a new trader to build a good foundation, get the account going the right direction again, and get those confidence levels back up. Or if you're an experienced trader and you haven't quite been able to put the pieces together, you know, like I mentioned before, it's probably not your fault at all. You just haven't learned the right strategy yet. There's a bunch of outdated strategies, all the internet. So it's, it's, it's not your fault. You just haven't the chance to learn the right stuff yet. That's what happened to me too. You know, it takes meeting the right mentor to give you the right tools, you know, show you to do it every day. You'll be fine. You'll, 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 you'll be great with it, especially if you're still watching this far in this video. So grab all the membership information, get registered, grab the free course, learn the basics there and get ready for the good stuff tomorrow morning, every morning in our trade room. If you have any questions here tonight, don't be afraid to call the office. I know I speak real fast on these videos, but we'll slow it down. Make sure you have all the pieces put together we need to give you the confidence to come out and join us and trade with us every day in our trade room. Or if you're not quite ready for that yet, don't be afraid to call the office. We can talk about what the best brokers are, uh, you know, the computers you need, all the tools you'll need so you're ready for trading later on in the year. All right, guys, so keep in touch. Don't be a stranger. We're always here to help out with anything you need help along the way. Hopefully by now, hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe so you don't miss tomorrow night's video. And I will see you guys in the trade room. If not, we'll come back and do it again in our next edition of our nightly newsletter. If I don't see you guys tomorrow morning, have a great have a great Friday. Have a great weekend. And we'll see you guys back here on Monday, uh, Monday evening for our next video. All right, guys. As always, be well out there. Be nice to each other. Enjoy the weekend. And we'll see you guys next time. Adios, amigos. Bye for now.